Everybody give him praise. Hallelujah. Let every voice, everybody lift him up today. Let's lift up Jesus and give him praise. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. 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 Jesus is worthy of our praise. Thank you, Lord. If you have something to be thankful for today, give him praise right now. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. If in these first two months of the year, this being the final Sunday of the month of February, January, February, these two months, if you have seen, if you have experienced a move of God in your life, give him praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Yes. These first two months, if you have seen, if you have received, a absolutely 100% for sure answer to a prayer that you sent up to heaven. Give God a praise right now for it. Hallelujah. I've seen it. I've received an answer to prayer this year. Hallelujah. Give him praise. Thank you, Lord God. If you know that you know that you know that there are more answers to prayers on their way. Give him praise. Hallelujah. Do you know that? There's more to come. That's right. There's more to come. There's more to come. Hallelujah. There's more to come. Thank you, Lord God. And if you know that you know that you know that you are loved, by the almighty God. Give him one more big praise. Do you know that you're loved today? Do you know that you're loved today? Do you know that God loves you today? Hallelujah. We are loved by the almighty God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Oh, God is good. All the time. Amen and amen and amen. The shout of victory. Today is part three. Say it with me. The shout of victory. Say it again. The shout of victory. One more time. The shout of victory. The book of Joshua. Joshua chapter six. How many of you like to shout? Amen. I'm a I'm a shouter. I like to shout. And for those of you that like to shout, understand that shouting for what God has done, shouting for the victory, shouting the name of Jesus, shouting in praise, shouting as you go into the fray. It's all scripture. God's. Folks, from Genesis through Revelations, they some shouting folk. Amen. I know some of you are real quiet, don't ever shout, but hey. And let me give you some, some insider information. When you get to heaven, you going to shout. You might not believe me or buy into it when you're here on this earth, but in heaven, everybody's shouting. You're going to shout like you never shouted before when you get to heaven. Amen. You're going to get inside that, thro that throne room and lose your mind in the presence of God. Amen. Wow. I believe that in our day, if it was high school or college, if you ever been to a dance, a concert, 
a boogie, whatever it is. I believe you shouted before. We used to do this, the old popcorn. We would be dancing and, and, and bump our partners. And, and when we would bump them, we would shout, hey. Amen. <laughs> we know how to shout. Well, if you can shout when you were dancing, why can't you shout for the Lord? Amen. 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 Joshua chapter six. <laughs> Joshua six, beginning with verse one. Now, Jericho was straightly or immediately lots of Hebrew words here. Jericho was shut up or, or closed because of the children of Israel. Everybody say this next part with me. None went out and none came in. Okay? So the, the children of Israel basically have surrounded or there's, they're, they're around Jericho so that there's no incoming or outgoing traffic to Jericho. Verse 2. And the Lord said, who said? And the Lord said unto Joshua, See, I have given into thy hand Jericho and the king thereof and the mighty men of valor. The Lord said unto Joshua, See, I have given into thy hand Jericho and the king thereof. Now, I need everybody to recognize the fact that when the Lord spoke this to Joshua, the king of Jericho is still alive and well. They're in their city. The mighty men of valor of Jericho are alive and well. I need everybody to recognize the fact that when God spoke this, in the natural, the victory had not been won. Those soldiers inside Jericho, they are armed. Their infantry is strong. They got good interior lines in there. They're ready to fight. Jericho was a fortress, and they were determined to keep their land. The children of Israel are the invaders. They've come into their promised land, and they come for the conquest. Okay, this is a conquest of Canaan land. Some of you have heard of Canaan, others, that's a new word. But the conquest of Canaan land, and it starts with Jericho. God said, I've given you the promised land. It flows with milk and honey. But guess what? In order to get your blessing, it's going to be a fight. How many of you have ever had to fight for your blessing? Wow, now there are times where the blessing just comes, and that's great. But there's other times where we got to go through physical steps to get our blessing. Amen. We got to do our part to get our blessing. Amen. And that's what this message is about. I mean, it's great when the windows of heaven just open up and we do absolutely nothing and the blessing just appears. But throughout scripture, there's a whole lot of times where we got to go through steps. Somebody say amen. We got to fight what? The good fight of faith. Amen. We got to be obedient and all this other stuff in order to get the blessing. And this is what this is all about. So Joshua and these guys, they're looking at Jericho. The soldiers of Jericho, the king of Jericho, they're all still there. The enemy forces are there. But what I need you to recognize is that even before the battle starts, God is proclaiming to Joshua that you got the victory. Do you see that? Even before they do what they need to do, God is saying, I have given into thy hand Jericho and the king thereof. God speaks it. Some of you have heard of the phrase, 
we call things that are not as though they were or as though they are. That's what God is doing right here. He's calling the victory, even though the victory has not been been uh, won yet. He's calling those things that are not as though they were. Amen. And so since God is doing that, what do we need to do? The same thing. And so this word C, we ask the question, number one, C. What do I see when a challenge or a obstacle or a problem comes into my life? What do I see? Do I see the problem and that's it? Do I see the problem, but do I also see the word of God? Do I also add to the problem the solution? Do I add to the problem my voice of prayer? Do I add to the problem my obedience to God in dealing with the doggone thing? Anybody hearing me? God said, Joshua, see. Joshua could see the walls of Jericho. Joshua had knowledge, the mighty man of valor. Shoot, God even said that the military forces of Jericho, they're mighty. He even gave character reference to the soldiers of Jericho. What did he call them? Mighty men of valor. Jericho was famous. That's why this was such a big deal. Those dudes knew how to fight. And that's one of the reasons why you all know that the children of Israel basically didn't have to fight. God brought the walls down. God says, see. With the natural eyes, it looked bad. Huge fortress, Jericho, military, tough fighting men, men that are not going to run and hide, men that are going to stand and fight. And the children of Israel are supposed to take Jericho. Take a look at it. Look at what you're facing. But then immediately follow it up with, with God, all things are possible. There's nothing too hard for the Lord. The Lord will come through. What do you see? What do you see? And then do you immediately bring God into what you are looking at? Anybody hearing me? What do I see? I see victory. What do I see? I see a blessing from God. What do I see? I see that God is on my side. Anybody hearing me today? What do I see? That this is going to work together for my good. What do I see? I see that God has given me an opportunity to work with him, to be in partnership with him. Remember what we've talked about? The team, Team Jesus, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, angels. And then who's the fifth part? Me. Me, me, Team Jesus. For those of you that haven't been here and haven't heard this, and for those of you that have been here, real loud, join in with me. Team Jesus is made up of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, the angels, and me. And me. And me. Give God praise. And me. Amen. All right, Joshua 6 and verse 3. So the orders go out. Jesus, the Lord, says to Joshua, And ye shall compass the city, all ye men of war, and go round about the city once, Thus shall thou do six days. 
All right, so let's show you this. Where's my Joshua? Joshua. Where is, there he is. <laughs> Let's give a big hand for Joshua. <laughs> Here comes Joshua. Here's, and here's Jericho. All right. So, <laughs> six and verse three states, and ye shall come past the city, all ye men of war, and go round about the city. Everybody said with me once. Thus shall thou do six days. All right. The first day. One time, Joshua and the men, they got the rest of the day off. And thank God, amen. <laughs> okay, now, when we get told to do something by God, it is important that we are obedient. that we are obedient. Amen. So they march around one time and then they stop. All right. The next day. And day two, they march around once, and then what church? They got the rest of the day off. So that lets us know what? Yield not to my own understanding. Can you say amen? amen. Church, this is a military conquest. This is taking on the mighty men of valor, the soldiers, the green berets, the special forces of Jericho. Amen. Joshua is a great warrior. And God is telling him, march around the, the city once and then sit down. Militarily, this makes no sense. You are not going to find any of this taught at West Point. VMI, Virginia, uh, yeah, military institution. You're not going to find it in any of the military uh, manuals of how to fight a war. So everybody read number three with me. Yield not to my own understanding. There are times when you are going through a trial or test that you need to be obedient and don't get caught up in trying to figure it out how you're going to do it for yourself. Can anybody say amen? That you're going to have to walk by faith and not by sight. Mm. Can everybody relate to Joshua? The third day. <laughs> it 
<laughs> and that's it. <laughs> the Lord said, that's it. Just, just march around how many times? Once in a day. And then sit down. Number four. Wait, wait, not yet. We know Joshua, they're eager. So that means with God, there are many times where we got to be patient. Can anybody say amen? That there are times we got to wait on the Lord. Have you ever had to wait on the Lord before? Have you ever had to been patient with God? Oh, so many times. Oh, my goodness. In my years of ministry. Ugh. So many times I've had to wait on the Lord. Wow. There's no doubt in my mind that there are people in the ranks with Joshua and the children of Israel that are saying, Joshua, what are we doing? What's this march? Once and then sit down. What is that? <laughs> Somebody say amen. amen. How many of you would have been wondering what the heck is going on? Amen. I would have. This, this, this makes no sense. How are we supposed to take Josh, Joshua? How are we supposed to take Jericho doing this? March and sit. March and sit. March and sit. When are we going to attack? When are we going to fight? Instead, everybody do it with me. March and sit. Man. <laughs> wow. So we got to be obedient. Don't get caught up in our own understanding. We got to be patient. What are we, number, day number four, Deacon, uh, Joshua? There we go. And then, set. So what does that tell us? March and sit, that lets us all know that when you are in a time of warfare, how many of you ever been in, in the seasons of warfare before? Where different, different situations don't go away overnight. When you are in a challenge that, that, that lasts for a little bit, it's important that mentally, emotionally, spiritually, in every way that you take time to rest that you take time to chill. Do not allow for a situation to dominate you 24 seven. That is so unhealthy. Your physical body can begin to break down and worry and stress and that's not good for you. Make sure that you take time to rest and chill. Take a look at Joshua, get a picture of him. This is the conquest of Jericho. And they're just marching around the city one time per day. The rest of the day, they're off. Rest, chill. What are we doing? Hey, we marched one time. God is letting us just sit down. Just chilling the rest of the day. We're being obedient. We're not caught up in our own understanding. We're being patient. So it's, it's chill time. When you really trust in the Lord, you are able to rest and chill during the toughest of times. If you are really walking by faith, even in the toughest of battles, you will find time to rest, chill, smell the roses, daisies, whatever. Eat, enjoy your big screen TV, do whatever it is that you do, even during the toughest of times, because you have so much faith and so much trust in the Lord. In the midst of the storm, you are still able 
to kick back and rest because you are trusting in God. Let's give God a praise if you're giving it so far. All right, sun's up. Here we go. How many times is this church? The fifth day. Hey, you're done for the day. Amen. He's being obedient, yielding not to their own understanding. They're being patient with whatever God has up his sleeve. It's time to rest and chill and be and, and during the conflict. And number six, they can do all of this. Why? Say it with me. Trust in the Lord. Say it again. Trust in the Lord. One more time. Trust in the Lord. Amen. And finally... God said six times, number six. And we sit. All right. Give God a praise. We've done our part. They've done their part. So far, so good. They've done their part. How many of you in a time of, of conflict, you do your part? Amen. All right. Chapter six, beginning with verse four. And seven priests shall bear before the ark seven trumpets of ram's horns. And the seventh day, what day, church? The seventh day, ye shall come past the city, how many times? Seven times. Seven times on the seventh day. Say that with me. Seven times on the seventh day. Again, seven times on the seventh day. The priest shall blow with the trumpets. Verse 5. And it shall come to pass that when they make a long blast with the ram's horn, and when ye hear the sound of the trumpet, all the people shall, everybody say it with me, shout with a great shout. Say it again. Shout with a great shout. One more time. Shout with a great shout, and the wall of the city shall fall down flat, and the people shall ascend up, every man straight before him. Amen. Verse 16, And it came to pass at the seventh time when the priests blew with the trumpets, Joshua said unto the people, everybody say this with me, Shout, for the Lord has given you the city. Amen. Joshua, you ready? It is your day. How many times, church? Right. Seven times. Seven times. That's one. <laughs> That's two. <laughs> That's three. Here we go. That's five. Here we go. Six. Last one. Amen. (laughs) 
Glory to God, the shout of victory. Hallelujah. <laughs> wow. The shout of victory. Did man, human beings, work with God? Did Joshua and the people of Israel, did they do their part? Did they obey God? Did it make military sense? But they did it anyway. They trusted in God. They walked by faith. And they shouted. And walls came down. And walls came down. I want you to take a look at that same sixth chapter, beginning with verse 20. It says, so the people shouted when the priests blew with the trumpets. And it came to pass when the people heard the sound of the trumpet and the people shouted with a great shout that the wall fell down flat. So that the people went up into the city, every man straight or immediately before him, and they took the city. And they utterly destroyed, say that with me, and they utterly destroyed, say it again, and they utterly destroyed all that was in the city. <laughs> there you go. Both man and woman, young and old, and ox and sheep and donkey with the edge of the sword. All of it. <laughs> Joshua had said unto the two men that had spied out the country, most of you know they sent in the spies, go into the harlot's house and bring out the woman and all that she has. Of course, everybody knows about Rahab. As ye swore unto her, and the young men that were spies went in, brought out Rahab and her father and her mother and her brother and all that she had, all that was with her. And they brought out all of her relatives and left them without the camp of Israel. So they stuck them in the back so they could be protected. Verse 24, everybody read this one out loud with me. And they burnt the city with fire and all that was therein, only the silver and the gold and the vessels of brass and of iron they put into the treasury of the house of the Lord. God said, get the money. Get that money. You got to got to get that money, Jack. <laughs> Don't be burning up no money. <laughs> God said, I ain't no dummy. Y'all get the money. <laughs> Isn't that what he said? Hey, Amen. Joshua, y'all better get that money. Shoot. Put that money in the treasury, Jack. <laughs> Don't y'all be wasting no gold. Y'all can burn up everything else. <laughs> That's our God. <laughs> Y'all keep that money. Amen. Wow. Amazing things happen when we work with God and we give him the shout of victory. 
Amen. Let's give God a closing big hand. Hallelujah, everybody. Thank you, Lord. Let's give Joshua a big hand. Amen and amen and amen. You going to take the wall with you? Yeah, it's burn up. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Joshua and Jericho. Amen. 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 Let's bow our heads. Father, we thank you so much for the day. And Father, we pray that everyone that saw and heard today, Father, that you'll bless them to make application so that if now, if they're going through something or later on this year, a trial or test comes their way, that they will remember this message and apply it. All seven points they will put into practice. And God, we know that what you did for Joshua and those folks, you'll do it for the Christians today. Because you are the same yesterday and today and forever. We thank you for honoring your word over and over and over again. And Father, we give you praise that you will honor your word for everybody here today as we work with you for the shout of victory in our lives. Father, we ask this in Jesus' name. Everyone said together. Amen and amen and amen. Give God another praise. Hallelujah. Ooh, God is good. God is good. Amen. Joshua, when you see Deacon Kelly, let him know he played a mean Joshua today. Hallelujah. <laughs> amen. Let's stand for our dismissal. All right, more than conquerors, you have a wonderful, wonderful week. Say it with me. For the Lord, he is good and his mercy. God bless you. We're dismissed.